Hello and welcome to the Electronic Air Mites Armory, where I tell you about the weapons you're going to need to win the war. Tonight I'm going to be talking to you about the Logitech G13 Advanced Game Board. This is the box it would come in. It's, as you can see, not in it right now. It's a fairly large box. Kind of nice handheld thing here. And there's the product itself. Now the Logitech G13 comes from Logitech's G series of gaming keyboards and other peripherals. The, this is well known for things like the G110, which is the sort of smaller gaming keyboard that has several macro keys. And of course, they have the larger gaming keyboards, some of which have similar LCD screens, such as the one here on the G13. Now, I've been using the G13 for just about over a year now, and I have found uh, many different things about it, and I bought it because I don't have a huge amount of desk space, and I wanted something that I could use with my Cyborg mouse, which is another review of mine, by the way, if you'd like to look, something that I can use with uh, my Cyborg mouse that isn't going to be as big as one of those giant keyboards, something a little more portable, something I can move around if I need to put papers in the middle of the desk or whatever, but also have a lot of functionality, be able to work well with a lot of different games. And I don't use my keyboard drawer for gaming. I like to have my gaming peripherals on the top of my desk. So I also wanted something that I had a little bit of comfort. So I bought the G13. Now I want to talk a little bit about what it, what it can do and what kind of things it, it has on it and see if you might want one and to tell you what makes it just a justifiable purchase or why you might want to pick something else. Now the G13 retails for just around $65 or so. Uh, Amazon.com I believe has it for $62. You can get it for various different prices. And the G13 has, it's not like a full-size keyboard, but it does have, they bill it as having 25 programmable keys. They call them G keys. Now, they're not like a keyboard where they have actual letters. Let me pull this up so that you can see. They're actually G keys. Now, why? It says there's actually 22 here. There's just 25 if you count these two larger keys, and then the little joystick down here, let me turn that outside, it's got a little, little game pad joystick, it actually has a key press that you can press inward as a key as well, and that also can be a, a key. So you have 25 programmable keys, however that's not telling you the full versatility of this object. You actually have three different profiles, one, two, and three, and these three different profiles will offer Different, you can de basically have three times as many because you can program these as different things. So that's kind of nice. Also, the profiles are usually attributed to different color schemes along with your, with your profiles that you have with your games. And for some reason, my uh, color schemes are not working. They have ever since I've got this thing, and now I uh, guess that it's not going to do that for me. But at any rate... Here we've got all the things you can do. So you can, you can, ah, there we go. You can see the LCD screen. There you go. It's nice. Here's where you cycle different things. There's your CPU and RAM. They've got a little news feed there. This is where you pick different profiles. Yeah, it's got all sorts of nice things going on here. All right. Let me put that down then and show you different color schemes. You know, just turn off the light here so you can see that, that the keys themselves are in fact backlit so you can play this thing at night. There's red. Ooh, very nice. There's green. You can set this up for nearly... a little harder to see the green there. Yeah, there you go. You can set this up for nearly any color that you want. I'm just going to quickly, you know, just turn it to purple there and then swing it around back to blue. Like a nice blue there. That's what I like. Let me turn the light back on. Let's flip it over and you can see it's got a nice metal piece here that actually adds a bit of weight. It is cur curved, so when you're putting your hand on there, it has a nice curve for your hand, and it, but you can sort of see the downward curve too. So you have a place for your hand to rest there, but then your fingers can curve downward naturally. The little gaming pad here, the little almost like a game joystick, there you go. That thing is nice and it, uh, it, it's really very responsive. 
clips back. I've not had any problems with it. So you have a large variety on how you want to control a game. If you want to use this to move your person, if you want to use WASD keys, I'll show you the software here in just a bit to tell you how you might use the, the, the different G keys and set them up to be what you want them to be. This is right here for the different, you can change the the color turn off and on the backlight if you don't want it. Now there are some interesting things about the G13 that uh, because it uses the G keys you don't necessarily need to have a mental view to say eh, okay there's WASD keys however they did realize that a lot of people are going to use them as that and so you can't very well see it but there are a little yeah you kind of see it there there's a little divot then on the middle keys because they realized that if they didn't have anything on there you wouldn't have any way of knowing where the WASD keys are so there you are there's these, these four here have nice little divots this one is what you typically would use. It's default bound to the space. You can bind anything to whatever. So that's a little bit bigger for space. Sometimes you can put these to space as well. If you like to use these, as, you know, if you like to use your thumb to jump, you don't want to have to move. I have found that, I don't know, it's a little weird. I don't think it's true, but it feels a little wider than your regular keyboard. So you, there seems to be a bit of a reach on there, but not a huge thing. It is, of course, missing one thing. If you think about this, this is your W key. You don't have any number keys above. So if you're used to, for example, playing an MMORPG and you want to hit the number keys above, you're going to have to find ways to either bind those number keys that you want to use to, say, the, the joystick, which you can, I, I like to do one, two, three, four, I've done that before, or bind them to here, or of course bind them to the many, many keys that you have around, bind them to the side. I th in some ways, the G13, it is better not to think of these as the keys that you can use, but actions you want to take. So I want to take my Berserker action uh, using the G3 key, and I want to use my cleaving action with the G5 key, or whatever like that. You, you can definitely set up your G5. And also, the software will allow you to print out your hotkeys, so if you want to see what keys you've bound, and have a nice little reference because again these are not listed as any sort of keys they're G1, 2, 3, 4, 5 so you're not going to automatically think ah you know WASD so I'm not binding the W key to something I'm binding the G4 key to something so that is something that takes a little bit of a learning curve and I still have a little bit of problems with oh yeah that's right you know I can't think of these as the keys on a keyboard because these can be anything basically but that's what makes these G series things so great because you can literally bind anything to these keys and I'll show you in just a second the gaming software it is nice and heavy it's not terribly heavy but it is nice and heavy so it also has just a little bit of these pads here on the bottom so that it won't slip so that it's slip resistant pads on the bottom as you can see I'm pressing very hard on that and it's not going it's not going very far at all. When you've got your hand, you, I very rarely ever have it move at all where, from where it is unless I physically move it. So it's very nice, solid, got a nice weight to it so that it doesn't move too much, but it also is light enough that you can make it very portable. One of the things that the G13 is being sold as over, for example, one of those big gaming keyboards is its portability and its lack of taking up a huge amount of space. If you didn't want something portable, like I said, you'd buy one of those huge honking keyboards and that would be that. Alright, let me show you the gaming software and then I'll come back and I'll talk a little bit about how I feel about the G13. Alright, let's look at the software that the G13 uses in order to set up new profiles and to program the G keys for whatever keystrokes that you would want to use in games. Here's just the regular screen there. Here we have the profiling software screen. You can see there's already profiles loaded here at the top and you can pick different ones. You can have the profile software scan for automatic profiles or pre-made profiles by Logitech. I've used quite a few. I like to start from the default profiles that they give you and then mess around with them. I usually find that they give you quite a bit that you can work with. Say so you want to create your own profile, which most of you will want to do. Let's create one called Test. Here's where you could give it a bit of a description. Here's where you could select the game's .exe file so that either the you can go on to the into the directory and find the .exe, and then the software would go ahead and detect what game you're playing so that the profile would load. 
Or you can do a neat thing where the game panel display will have a little OK thing that you need to say and it will automatically detect what game that you are in and the EXE file and then the, the G13 itself will just go ahead and load the profile. I like that because in some things like when you're playing with Steam games or games that use some sort of launcher software, I find that this is a very accurate way of bringing up those when sometimes finding the EXE file is not always the best way of doing that. You can lock the profile of the game is running so that you can't automatic accidentally change profile. That doesn't happen to me anyway, but you can also copy from a distinct, an existing profile. Let's do default here. Profile. Ah, that's right. I already have test on there. Let's do test 2. There you go. So the default's pretty easy here just looks like your regular keyboard. It gives you on the side keys that have been programmed that you can say, okay, I'm going to drag and drop. I want F6 there. I'd like F8 there. So you can do that. You can create your own commands that can be added to this list. Or if you just want to go ahead and hit the key there so that you know which G key you want to use, you could do that. Clear this out here and fully clear it. So shift E for example, or you could set a keystroke to be U or J, or you can clear it all out. Let's say we'll have it be T, and you can name it T, whatever you want to do. That's if you want to put one keystroke or a shift keystroke or an alt keystroke type of thing. Now let's say you want to do something just a little bit more sophisticated. So let's name this multi-key barracks and build. So then you have a recording software down here and it works just like any sort of keystroke recording software. So you can click this, shift B, let go of B, let go of shift, 555, five, five. and that would be, then you want to stop the recording, that would be like assigning one key to hit shift, then B, then 555. Five, five. So let's say you're playing a game like StarCraft II, for example, and you wanted to have it so that it would select your barracks and then build five of a certain type of unit. That's what you might be able to do using this sort of macro software. Now you can also record the delay between events. Let's say a game needs just a little bit of time. So it's, it would be recording your macro as if it were a real-time key press. So let me just go ahead and show you that. Do the same thing. Shift, B, let go, 555. Five, five. And you can see the delays, the microsecond delays here that you can, the millisecond delays here that you can go through. You can actually edit those if you want to change them to different milliseconds. That's really pretty neat. That's extremely versatile and extremely powerful. So for people who are very good at making macros, there's a lot that you can do here. You can have it make amazing amounts of keystrokes, do multiple things, have it switch up different keys. And like I said, since you can put the delays between events, you can even add milliseconds in between if a game needs the milliseconds in between in order to, for these keys to register. You can do so much with this if you're good at it. Now for me, I'm a novice at this. So this sort of macro building is very intimidating. So for many people, there will be a learning curve to use the multi-key programming utility. But once you know how to use it, you can do so many things with it that it will basically allow you to bind one key to a whole lot of other things. If you're used to these G series Logitech gaming keyboards or any other macro recording keyboards, this will be second nature. And I think you'll find that the G13 has just about as much power as any other software that you can use to make macros. But it's built into this machine, so that's nice. You don't have to go to any sort of third-party thing. You've got this. It comes from Logitech. You can also do whole text blocks if that's what you need to do. So entire text blocks, you just sit here and you enter the text you want to do. You can then also use the delay between the characters as well. There's mouse functions you can put on there, left click, right click, middle click, whatever. You can set up your media commands, play and pause and stop, whatever you want. So that if you want to use your G13 as a playback machine for your MP3s, you got hotkeys for various different hotkeys in Windows, shortcuts to bring up local or network programs, files, folders, whatever you want. If you just want to use it so that you can, hey, I want to bring up this, there's an actual productivity aspect that you can use the G13 for. If you're not only going to use it for gaming, you can actually use it for productivity. 
can set different functions like email and web browser. This might be something you just do when you're not playing games. And then they have a built-in Ventrilo command set up if you want to use Ventrilo. So that's uh, really, really robust. And you can, of course, set any of these keys and the, the different little places down here, the bigger keys as well as the little joystick. You can also set up whatever you want with that. Here's your applet software, and it'll show you all the different applets you have. I don't know why Guild Wars 2 decided it was going to have two of them, but it doesn't seem to affect anything. The applets are what shows upon the little screen. You can see a little example here. That would be one for, like, World of Warcraft, where it shows your strength, agility, and stamina. There's a wide variety of them. Some of them are pretty neat, and other the, others of them are just not really great like it's just a splash screen that says the name of the game you're playing you know that's not really all that exciting some of them are, are actually pretty useful like the guild wars one will tell you different things about your character the applets really aren't make or break if you're going to buy this thing i mean it's nice to have that little screen there but i don't think it's a huge benefit you also have this this is where you set the various colors you get three different setups here, three different profiles, and you can set different colors for your LCD screen as well as the backlighting for your keys. There's pretty much any color that you want with a color wheel of dark and light and dark, so you have all sorts of wonderful colors that your heart's content. You can sit there and change colors and decide what your favorite colors are. Now this last thing's pretty neat. This is the profiles to go menu where let's say you've sit and taken some time, you've set up some profiles, and you're going to go on a LAN party, and the G13 is nice because it's fairly small and easy to carry around and very portable. So you want to take your profiles with you. You don't have to remake your profiles when you get to the LAN party. Well, with this, you can simply drag your profile down here, and it'll put it on the G13's in onboard memory. You can have several of these, and it'll use up the memory as you do, but usually you're not going to play playing a whole lot of, of games on it, so you can pull back and forth and delete the ones that you put on there. And Also, let's say you make one while you're out and about, you can put it on there and then copy it onto your computer so you can actually share with your friends or do whatever you want. You do need the Logitech gaming software and the computer that you're going to be using, but otherwise the profile itself will be loaded onto the onboard memory. That's really nice, and since this is a lot more portable than some of those other G-series gaming keyboards, I think this will be something that will draw a lot of people to the G13 in its portability and the, the ability to have put the profiles in its memory. So that's a nice, I mean, it's not, a, again, not a make or break thing. I'm not a huge LAN gamer, but I think it's really neat that you can do this if you want. Then you have the general options that you can change the different options. Then you have a nice help file as well. So this will teach you how to record multi-key macros and do all different things. It's not going to get you over the learning curve right away, but it, it will help a little bit. So that's the... And we're back. All right, I think you can tell by my enthusiasm and the fact that I've been using this for almost a year without replacing it or getting something new that I actually very much like the G13. It will not be everybody's best pick. Because it is portable, because it is small, and it is a game board and not a keyboard, you are going to get the same amount of versatility that you would, would with a full-size keyboard. And one of the big things, of course, will be, let's say you're playing an MMORPG, you're going to need a keyboard that's at least nearby, right? If you want to talk to people, then you're going to have to be able to have a keyboard to actually type whatever you want to say to them. Unless, of course, you're using something like Ventrilo or, or using something like TeamSpeak or whatever in order to basically talk through a microphone, you're going to need a keyboard. So this is not something that you can say replaces the keyboard. It is not something that you can say will have the same full functionality. And of course, with a keyboard where you can bind every key, like one of the other higher-end Logitech brands, then you're going to have more keys that you can bind. However, if you want compact 
And if you think 25 keys are all you need, then this is a really good pick. It's nice, it's attractive, it's a solid gaming peripheral. The keys, as I've shown you with the software, you can bind macros that you can't even believe. And that's one of the things that I think, if have anything I have a problem with, it's the fact that I don't know how to use this thing properly. I use this like some, you know, some novice. I mean, it's, it's kind of like, well, okay, I'm going to put WASD and that makes me feel pretty good about myself. When other people who are, you know, veterans of the macroing world would be sitting here hitting two or three keys and it would do huge amounts of things, you know, complete their entire build order on a on a uh, real-time strategy game or create, you know, they would have their own PvPing profile and then switch over to their realm versus realm profile and then switch over to their simply uh, fighting monster profile. So you have all different things that you can do and it's pretty much on the fly. Now like I said, a couple things that I have a little bit of problem with is there, there's not any number keys up there, so if you're used to hitting the number keys you, and you need the number keys, then you're going to have to rebind them. So it does take some work. Almost everything that you do, you're going to have to do a little work with it. Even when it has the pre-made profiles like I showed you, a lot of times you're going to want to customize those because it really, I mean, the, that's somebody else's work and they're not always the best thing for you. So it's not a plug and play thing. I mean it is. You can plug and you can play and that's fine. But if you really want to make the most of this, this is not a plug and play device. This is something that you need to prepare before you're going to play a game. You need to sit down and think about where you want to put your keys. You can do it on the fly and that's great. But you know, most of the time you're going to want to go to that programming software and you're going to want to set it up exactly how you want it. It's going to take you a time. I, you, know, you could take 30 minutes, an hour to set up your profile and that's not unreasonable to think about. So it's not something that you're just going to jump into the game and use. I, a lot of times you can and that's wonderful, but it's not going to be the most efficient. If you want to have the competitive edge, if you want to really do well, then you're going to spend some time setting up your profile, setting up your macros. So, I mean, that's not really a bad thing. I'm, tell I'm saying that as if that's a negative. It's not a negative. It is because it is so versatile and so powerful that it does take some time to work with. And so I think those of you that are really into that are going to find that the G13 is just as powerful, if not more so, than any other of the of the gaming keyboards. And something that I think is kind of neat is with the G13, if you, particularly if you have the space on your desk, then you can have a game board and a keyboard, which is something a little, it's going to give you more programmable keys than say one of those big keyboards if you're going to use most of the big keyboard for a keyboard. If you're not going to rebind all of the other keys, this gives you, in effect, 25 extra keys and you can have a keyboard at the same time. If you were really crazy and you need tons of macros, one could say that you could buy one of the gaming keyboards and this gaming board and have bazillion different keys that you could rebind. And, and they actually, since the gaming software, the programming software is uniform throughout most of those gaming keyboards, it, it would be something that you could do. Like I said, I have a Cyborg MMO7 mouse. Let me just show you my Cyborg. You know, that's my MMO7 mouse. And so I actually use this in order to uh, add to my versatility. So I, I have some keys bound to my mouse, I have some keys bound to my gamepad, on my game board, and it's really nice. So you can, they really work well together, particularly if you don't need to use the keyboard in it. So this is the type of thing that you're seeing with this. And I know uh, some people will like and some people will hate the little joystick. I mean, it's nice to have. I don't use it a lot. I usually use it for reflex-based picking of things. So like if I want something real quick like in Far Cry 3 for throwing a rock, you, I have it up or maybe hitting the healing stuff you can you know do it to the side or perhaps if you want to use it for Diablo for a commonly used spell or something. So I actually just use this cardinal directions but one can use it as just to control your character if you really like that if you like using your thumb to control your character like for example in World of Warcraft you could use it to turn and go forward and backward or whatever. And anything you can do with it you can th use these as jump and whatever. So those are nice to have. Not everybody's gonna like them. I do find that these two keys are just a little bit wobbly. They, they 
feel weaker than they are. Mostly Logitech stuff is solid and I, I think this is no exception. These keys are very solid and it feels nice. Now I do not believe, and someone could correct me if I'm wrong, but I do not believe these are, are mechanical keys like some of those keyboards will have, uh, which are mechanical buttons. I have not found any problems with that, or pushing multiple buttons at the same time. No problems with that. That's never had an issue. So it's just going to be like the gaming keyboards where you can push multiple buttons. So I think it's a very strong product. I think it's a very good product. It is not going to be a product for everyone. Some people who won't like game boards like this then they won't need it. Or if you already have one of the giant keyboards, you know, maybe you don't need it. If you're finding you already have too many keys to macro, then don't add more. But if you want something small and you want something portable and you want something that doesn't take up a whole lot of desk space and then very comfortable because I think that's one of the best things. I like it. Now it fits my hands. I don't think I have huge hands or anything, but it fits my hands just fine. So I love my G13. I, I think it's probably my favorite gaming peripheral. I, between that and the Cyborg MMO mouse, I'm kind of, mm, I don't know which one I like better. I, I know the G13 is something that I use uh, a lot and use more of its features, I think, than the Cyborg mouse. But I do use the Cyborg mouse's features quite a bit, too. So I think it's a wash on which one I like better, but I think the but the best thing is they work wonderful together, which is obviously something that you're going to want with a game board. Like I said in the gaming software, never had any sort of problems with the software not working or not connecting with a game. It's plug it right in, then you load in all of the things you need, and it's, and it's usually fine. So that's that. I think it's a weapon that will help you win the war. I think if you're particularly adept at making macros, then you are going to really love the software and you're going to really get a lot of efficiency out of this. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Please watch my others and subscribe if you like it and I hope to see you again soon.